Welcome back everyone. Little pre-video disclaimer here. About two weeks have passed since I filmed this video you're about to watch. We've been very busy pulling 14 hour days. We are done with splits. We're on to back checks and adding boxes to make some honey. So we're about two weeks behind on this first video. I'll catch you guys up. So I apologize, I've had plenty of time to work bees, have not had a lot of computer time to edit videos. So here we are editing. We're going to get this video released to you guys. So I hope you enjoy. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today is exciting day. It's day one of making splits here in Texas. You'll see we've already gotten started. Got started bright and early this morning and it takes a little bit to get in the swing of things. So I wanted to wait to fill you guys in on what we're doing this year. I call this the split stack method. I, I mean, it's just making splits and stacking them up. The idea is in the, if you don't need to know anything about bees, is we make splits. We're splitting a double deep in half so that we're turning one colony into two colonies and we do it this way we stack them up because we want to replace our queens every year and this stack we have ideally if you if you consider a double two three and a half then there could be three or four queens in here um, and the all the confusion and all the fighting and all that all the pheromones that's going to get queen kill in that stack and it's also going to even out the amount of bees through each box because some of these doubles are busting and some of them aren't so that's the idea here we'll go check out the crew here we're doing three frames of brood and as much food as possible esta buen brood See, okay, only frames of brood, 11 frames of brood in that hive. They're not all like that, but that's a good one. So what they're doing is opening up the double, opening up this, and seeing how much brood's in the top, and they'll kind of pop up the brood so we know how much brood we're dealing with, and we switch brood between colonies to cause confusion. Once one's made up with three frames of brood, we pull that box off and throw it in the stack and move on with the lower story. So in the yard today, we've got three teams splitting. So with this, this, uh, this side of the yard had six rows. So we've got three teams of two people and those teams are just heading down the row. Uh, we've got myself running the crew and then another guy for support. So he's popping tops, popping feeders out ahead of the splitting crews and making sure pallets are picked up, trash is picked up, making sure everything's organized and we maintain a clean work environment. So I know it seems a little chaotic what we're doing, but this is what we have to do every year to increase our numbers because average loss in um, the U.S. In, in beekeeping is 40% reported uh, each year. So if you, you do that math, we're splitting everything in half. That means that we're maintaining numbers doing this. Um, that's what we have to do to maintain numbers. Now, we're gonna approach the year with a few different strategies. This is one we wanted to specifically stack this yard because I, I didn't mention uh, me and one of my other guys actually went to California to work the bees out there. It was beautiful and I really hope, I wish that I had been able to get some video for you guys. However, we were there for two and a half days and had 1600 colonies to get through. So we just had to work. I couldn't get out the camera at any time, couldn't waste any time. We were just going from yard to yard to yard working. Um, it, was, it was two and a half full days of work, but I don't like being away from my family, and I just wanted to go out there and get the work done. So we went out there and manipulated them. So I had sort of an idea of what we had coming back because we went out there, did a lot of reversing. So if the, if the double is top heavy on bees, we reversed the two boxes so that we switched the two boxes so that the bees would work up. And if one was kind of hurting a little bit and one was doing good, we equalized, um, robbed some brood from a good one to kind of help out the smaller ones. So that was the strategy going into splitting 
then splitting, I kind of have an idea of which colonies from which locations that I want to stack up and split, split in half and stack up and which colonies I want to, um, we're going to keep some parents behind to make honey, which it did last year, but hopefully these parents are significantly better. And we're going to split those above an excluder, so I'll get some video of that. But these just hit the ground on Tuesday, this load did. So we have an entire semi-load in here. So we've got, we had, uh, how many were over there? 168 were over there. And I have no idea how many is over here. It's three, six, uh, one extra row over here. And then the rest of them are over here. So we kind of have three different working areas. So uh, it kind of works out good. We get with the three crews, we'll get down the rows, take a water break. And then ideally we'll get down these three rows and it'll be lunchtime. And then for the rest of the day, we've got these and those. So the idea is get this 408 done in one day, split into ideally 816, maybe more, maybe less hives, depending on how many in, in here are actually dead. We've probably come across out of 168 uh, or whatever we've checked out of this 168 so far, I think we've come across maybe six or eight dead. So we're doing pretty good on dead outs and hoping that it continues that way. I know that we had difficulty with some that I think were exposed to fungicide, not on a field that they were sitting on, but on a neighboring field that was spraying. I think So they're a little down on bees, but they're still good on brood. So we can use those to stack just like this and they can, they'll just have a little less bees, a little less bee population. So that's what we got going on today over here we've got a pallet of brood boxes um, another pallet of uh, brood boxes that we'll use to when a when one colony like the one you saw earlier has 11 frames of brood we can make up almost three splits out of that so we need an extra box and then over here we've got a pallet of foundation that's rolled Oh, this is actually this has actually been used. This has been used for honey. This is kind of a mixture of blonde comb and I think some foundation as well, but brand new frames that we're working into some of these. Todo muerto, falta de tino. Ok. So that queen is two years old that you just saw. We kept some of these just to try. And I mean, it definitely, we definitely lost more of them than a new queen, but obviously she's a, she's a good queen right now, making up good splits, so. These colonies we kept as doubles to run honey, the ones I bought. Um, although they were very down on bees because they were they were pretty the, the mite load was pretty high and they didn't do too great in the spring so we just split them in half and put a queen in one side 
It's a method that we usually use in the summertime with mated queens. So as you can see, this is a pretty chaotic process. Contrary to popular belief, splits can make honey with the right management. And the fact that today is like March 14th or something. So we're, we're making splits about a, a week to a week and a half earlier than we normally do, which is great. So hopefully these will build up to make a decent honey crop. But this is here just what we have to do because we can only make so many summer splits because then they have to go have a home in the summer. They have to have some nutrition. We can't, when you split a hive, you need natural nutrition. You cannot manipulate uh, with sugar and protein. You can't manipulate them to build at the rate that they need to when you make a split like this. Um, you can make stronger splits and maybe get away with it, but they're just not gonna be what they need to be. So in the summertime, the ones that we do split after our honey flow in May, those have to go to something, uh, some, some area with good nutrition. And there's nowhere, it's not worth it to haul them up north because you, you have to break even on your trucking to go up north. It's expensive to go up north. So we end up taking them to watermelons to do pollination on watermelons and they end up building up there which all these colorful boxes that you're seeing those went to melons none of those went up north so they're doing all right uh, it's a it's a method that works we just can't make as many splits that way because we don't have that many melon contracts and and melons don't always do good they're exposed to to more uh, monoculture farming so which, which is good for them to a degree, not good for them a whole lot to be doing that. So these, do, these did really good in California on almonds this year. Um, I know some people do not have that luck. Some people get sprayed, it's unfortunate. Um, but almonds are good for bees, even though it's a monoculture out there, it's, they are good for your, your honeybees. They build up, they get good feed. These won't need feed until we drop a cell in, we'll give them a little feed to stimulate them, a little sucrose, but they will not need feed um, until then. So, but they, they did not need feed before then. Sometimes they come back and they're light and we have to feed them before we split them, which takes time, it delays our splitting. This year we're doing pretty good on, on weight. A lot of work ahead of us this spring. So I'm gonna hop off and run the crew, make sure that we're moving efficiently and make sure these guys get fed here in a minute. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching these guys work, watching us make some splits. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. There will be more videos on this. So if you want me to go in depth in any, any way, shape or form on our method of splitting, then just let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.